I just would like to put on record the uh, statements made by uh, Sen uh, former Senator De Lima. During the investigation here in the Senate, during her term when she was still a senator, uh, wala pa rin nakita kabidensya tungkol dyan sa mga DDS ng tinatawag. Nung uh, CHR chairman siya, wala pa rin siyang, uh, wala rin nangyari sa mga investigation at wala pa rin nakita ng ebidensya. Nung secretary siya ng DOJ, which is a very, very, which is, which uh, is a very, very powerful uh, cabinet position, wala po rin siyang mga nakitang ebidensya. At hanggang ngayon, yun pa rin po ang sinasabi niya, wala pa rin gustong mag-testify, wala pa rin gustong, uh, wala pa rin siyang uh, kinakasuhan. So I think uh, that is a matter of incompetence, Mr. President, Mr. Chair. I take Thank you. Mr. Chair, can I have to that, can, uh, Your Honor. Uh, okay, so, so Senator, thank you, uh, Mr. Chair. A few questions addressed to former Senator uh, De Lima. Uh, during your time as a chairperson of the uh, Commission on Human Rights, uh, when did you uh, s uh, start serving as the uh, chairman of the Commission on Human Rights, if I may ask? I was appointed in 2008. Up to 2010. To 2010, All right. when I was appointed as the Secretary of All Justice. Right. Did you conduct the uh, investigations uh, regarding uh, EJ case? Yes, the, the uh, CHR and bank All conducted right. a public inquiry right, right there in Davao City. May I know uh, kung ano-ano po yung mga lugar na inibistigahan nyo tungkol sa EJK? Um, yung tungkol pa sa lugar, it was actually the entirety of Davao City because of the phenomenon of DDS. At inimbitahan nga po namin the former mayor, who also, who acted, who, who appeared and acted as resource person. And mga ilan-ilan na mga opisyal, maraming opisyal actually, the city councilors, barangay chairman, uh, PNP officials. Only that, uh, halos wala na nag-appear dun sa mga nakausap namin, discreetly, confidentially, who shared their knowledge about the DDS. These are also self-confessed DDS members, just like uh, Edgar Matubato. Kaya lang po, in the 2009 inquiry, wala pa po sila Edgar Matubato and Arturo Lascanias. Uh, Na-mention yung mga pangalan nila, pero wala pa po sila doon. Hindi pa po namin sila na-access uh, at uh, hindi po na-present doon sa DDS inquiry. So, so wala ho kayong uh, results ng investigation. Were there any cases filed uh, uh, because of your investigation, uh, Madam Senator? Okay, when I was appointed in 2010, I uh, meron po ako yung aking mga personal investigation notes, pero hindi pa ho, wala pa ho yung naging resolution. Now, we turned over the records to the Commission on Human Rights, and then later, they came out with uh, the resolution. Now, that was, I think, in 2012, June 20, 2012. Yung resolution nila, one of the recommendations is for the filing of, the administrative, um, of an administrative and criminal cases against then former Mayor Rodrigo Duterte and some other officials. What I know is that this was referred to the office of the <coughs> Ombudsman, but I think later on, Mr. Duterte was cleared of uh, the, there was no no finding or no 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 f cases filed. So the former president was cleared. Am I no, correct? it was not really cleared because um, I think, if I'm not mistaken, the uh, main reason why no cases were filed with the ombudsman against former mayor Duterte and then President Duterte is that uh, if you nung, nung, ano na po, nung glinabas na po yung uh, uh, res, uh, ano nila sa, from the ombudsman is he was already the president. Well, so on the, in the presidential course of your, immunity. In the course of your investigation when you were CHR uh, chairman and you thought, and then you think that uh, 
the former president was involved in the uh, in killings in uh, his uh, hometown in Davao. Why didn't you file cases against him? The, the, the investigation was conducted. But the problem was that those who were in the know, yung konti ho, the mga self-confessed DDS members <coughs> at that time, I, uh, they're not willing no. to when testify. You were, when you were DOJ secretary, why didn't you file a case against the former president? You had all the means, you had all the power to do so. When you were secretary of the Department of Justice. I actually referred the matter of when Edgar Matobato came to us for witness protection. I uh, refer ko po uli yung the DDS matter uh, so what to happened? the uh, wala po. Wala oh, bakit wala? You were, you were uh, a very, very powerful uh, member of the cabinet during the Aquino administration. You did not do anything? It's not to that I did not case? do anything. To pursue it's the case? It's just that I was, I asked the NBI to pursue further the investigation. Pero wala na po na na submit sa akin na report. They were telling me that they had also so much difficulty accessing possible witnesses at the time. All right. One more thing, uh, Madam Former Senator. Why is it only in Davao that you had this investigation? Bakit Davao lang? Why were you so focused and why are you so concentrated in investigating uh, Davao? We were focused on investigating the so-called DDS phenomenon because we have read some reports about it. Foremost of which was the report of the UN Special Rapporteur Phillips Alston. And uh, he did come out to that report uh, citing certain findings um, of the UN Special Rapporteur Philip Alston and Meron din pong report, you Human Rights Watch, they called it You Can Die Anytime, also referring to the DDS phenomenon. So we felt that at that time, because of these reports, and our CHR regional office did confirm that there were killings, but they could not tell us, or they, they refused to tell us, that it was actually the doings of the DDS on orders of then Mayor Rodrigo Duterte. But the insiders, the ones I mentioned kanina, I think there were three of them, which we, which we interviewed secretly or discreetly, they did say that there was such a thing as a, or a group oh. as a Davao Death Squad and then formed by the former mayor and then uh, uh, getting orders also from the former mayor, something that were validated later on by Edgar Matobato and Arturo Lascanias. Okay, uh, uh, Mr. Chair, I would like to invite the attention of uh, the former senator when she was still uh, a uh, sitting member of uh, the Senate. Uh, during, uh, with regard to the committee report of the Committee on Justice then, for the years, if I may read, for the years 2001 to 2009, under the Arroyo administration, 91,762 killings were reported, or an average of 10,196 killings per year, 850 killings per month, or 28 killings per day. On the other hand, for the years 2010 to 2016, under the Aquino administration, there were 85,878 recorded killings with an average of 14,313 killings per year, 1,193 killings per month, or 40 killings per day. You were the Justice Secretary during the Aquino administration. Why did you not investigate these killings? All right. May I say? But may I start by saying that uh, on the matter of EJ case in general, especially with respect to the killings of activists, is is um, I I did recommend, and it was adopted. There was this administrative order number thirty five, creating an interagency committee to look into the various drug 
killings, uh, not, not uh, to the various uh, activist killings, targeting members of progressive groups, leftist organizations, and uh, that was uh, somewhat rampant during the time of uh, former President Arroyo. Now, bakit wala pa po yung drug killings? Kasi nga po, pinapapursuko pa sa NBI. It was not the real focus then of Administrative Number 35, which is the Special Interagency Committee to address extrajudicial killings. Now, talking about the Gordon Report, you mentioned the, the, uh, the uh, Justice Committee Report, which was subsequently headed by former Senator Dick Gordon. Sinabi nga niya po yon, na bakit yung EJ case lang, bakit yung, uh, uh, bakit yung ibang mga EJ case ay hindi natin kailangan investigahan, o hindi natin inimbestigahan dun sa Senate Committee. Mukhang may problema po sa ganun. Kasi ang nakita ng committee, ng majority committee in, 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 in coming up with that uh, committee report is that well, hindi actually nila nakita na may special complexion at the time, at the start of the drug war killings, beginning 2016, under the Duterte administration. I'm not talking about the drug war killings, kasi wala namang ganong uh, war on drugs, uh, specifically in Davao City, although vic among those, or many of those victimized, were also alleged drug offenders, aside from petty criminals and other kinds of criminals. So, nakita dawat yon, and that was the very point of my resolution that I filed calling for an inquiry, na medyo ibang fenomeno nito ngayon sa war on drugs, na eto sa ngalan ng war on drugs ay may mga pinapatay in in in, in numbers, substantial numbers, in the name of war on drugs. Kaya dapat, hindi yun naging issue talaga. Bakit hindi na lang natin imbestigahan yung buong mga pangyayari ng mga EJ case in various administrations? What they failed to appreciate, I'm talking about the committee report, is that the focus of my investigation ay yung mga dumadami na halos araw-araw na pinapatay since day one of the former president's assumption into office and even before his official assumption into office, meron na talaga na mga pinapatay araw-araw, halos araw-araw, nakita natin yun. Thank you, ma'am. So that's supposed to yes. be Mr. Chair, the focus. Ma'am, take a moment, uh, Senate President Pro Tem. No? Reminder to everyone, especially the members of the committee, Ang subcommittee natin, ang instruction natin, Philippine War on Illegal Drugs. Okay. I know malaking overlap niya sa EJK because marami siguro nga napatay sa, in the name of Philippine War on Illegal Drugs. But this is not uh, strictly the, an EJK uh, hearing or investigation. Okay? Basta klaroyin ko lang po sa inyo lahat, uh, lalo na sa members ng subcommittee. May mother committee tayo, yun ang instruction sa atin. Investigate the Philippine war on illegal drugs. Okay, so... Yes, Mr. Chair, Chair, I would like, just like to wrap up my uh, questioning to uh, yes. Senator De Lima. Uh, but I would like to put it on record that uh, the resource person, uh, the former senator, did not answer directly my question, uh, uh, Mr. Chair. And uh, I, might not, I might be mistaken of uh, defending the former president. I am not defending the former president. In fact... If it is his turn to answer questions, I will uh, ask questions also. Mr. Chair, I just would like to put on record my observation in this committee hearing that in this committee hearing, our resource persons are given even 10 to 15 to beyond the 15 minutes uh, time to speak up. Unlike what, is, what happened in the Quadcom in the lower house, where in Kawawa, mga police na ginawang resource person doon, this question is answerable by yes or no. Yes lang or no lang. No more uh, explanation. Pero dito, Mr. Chair, we are treating our uh, resource person with dignity and respect. So I just would like to put it on record.
Mr. Chair. And uh, as a follow-up to the question of our uh, majority, uh, our uh, Senate pro tempore, to Senator Dilema, Mr. Chair, isn't it a fact that NBI is operationally and administratively under the Department of Justice? It is. Yes. So if it is, if you are morally convinced about the wrongdoings of the former mayor of Dabao City, about these killings, bakit mo po hinahayaan lang na walang report yung NBI sa'yo? You have instructed the NBI to follow up on this investigation. Tapos na tapos na lang yung buong year, six years of the Aquino administration, hindi ka nakapag-file ng kaso kay President Duterte. Is that a... Uh, is it, that uh, it, malpisance on your part as that Secretary of Justice wherein you are morally convinced na may ginawang masama si Pangulong Duterte, du, uh, Mayor, then Mayor Duterte. Tapos ngayon, hinayaan mo lang NBI na walang ginawa, walang binalik na report, or baka sinabihan ka ng NBI, Ma'am, ang ating kaso will not stand in court. Baka ganun sinabi sa iyo, kaya wala na nangyayari doon sa ginawa mong uh, tasking sa NBI. Can we request for a brief uh, answer, ma'am? My brief answer is that I did make some certain follow-ups and there was um, um, reports from the NBI, verbal reports, when I asked about them and that what, what would they uh, tell me, that nahihirapan sila na mag-access sa, sa Davao na mga possible witnesses. Can I have the name of the NBI chief during that time na kinausap, na sinabihan niyo? Lang. NBI gear was it gear um uh okay, recall na lang ma'am and then once yes, you recall tell us okay uh Sir, to deliver, the, were you investigating the Davao Dead Squad when you were chair of uh, the CHR yes that but, was the that was the, the focus but the former president doesn't confirm the existence of uh, the, the Davao Dead Squad that has been his position nung tinanong ko ho siya nung nag-appear siya sa public inquiry there's no such thing as DDS, but there are people, there are witnesses who said that there, are, there is such a thing as the Vow Death Squad. It may not be the correct term, or they, it may not really be or, or, or explicitly called the Vow Death Squad. Who, but, coined, uh, who, coined that, uh, who coined that name, that phrase, the Vow Death Squad? Um, I think it was media, it was certain sectors, certain groups. But it was uh, not the CHR which you headed before, Madam, Madam Senator. We, we knew it to be as the Vow Death Squad because of the various reports. But it, was, it did not originate from us, the term the Vow Death Squad. What is clear to us is that the, there was this group of assassins, and some of them are actually part of the of the uh, Davao City Police Office, and the, there are also the Abanteros, the assassins themselves, with respective handlers. And already, Mr. Matobato and Mr. Yeah. Lascanias. If I may cut you, uh, Madam Senator, what's the pleasure of the Senator Delima? Just one or two sentences, Your Honours. Yeah, okay, please go ahead. We all heard from the horse's mouth that there are indeed dead squads and pointed to certain former PNP chiefs or chiefs of Davao. These are very clear. Davao death squad to liquidate criminals, or suspected criminals. Inducing, encouraging, and prodding people to kill directly or indirectly is not part of the duty of an executive official, whether it is mayor or president. Malinaw po, yung Davao Death Squad and Jan. Marami pong sinabi dyan tungkol sila Matobato and Las Canas. And, and Colonel Garma has uh, uh, confirmed that there is such a group only that there is covered by code of silence. Hindi po madali talaga ang kumuha ng mga pag-aamin sa mga police officials na sila ang mga inutusan para pumatay. Ang dami pong mga dinarate sila Matobato and Las Canas tungkol sa mga specific cases of killings na yung order either pinapadaan kina Sonny Beneventura 
porque las cañas, and at times, even from then Mayor Mr. Duterte Chair, himself. I'm sorry to interrupt Thank you, the ma good senator. Yes, yes, you have the floor, you have the floor, go ahead. The uh, former senator is jumping into conclusion. Let the committee decide whether uh, uh, indeed the, the, there is an existence of uh, the uh, Davao Dead Squad. Uh, uh, senator uh, Strada, may I yes. just... Uh, go ahead, sir. Uh, yes, Mr. Uh, President. One, one statement. Kung lahat man ito, kung totoo, pahilin niyo ako ng kaso. May korte. At sinasabi ninyo na bakit ninyo nalaman na matay na ganun-ganun. So, ibig sabihin may witnesses kayo. O, yung file the, the case in court or file the cases in court. Sabi ko nga dito sa ano ko, mine and mine alone. Gusto ko ang syudad ko maganda, malinis, at livable. At sa awa ng Diyos, ako ang nauna sa Pilipinas. Alam mo bakit, sir? Ako po ay empleyado lang ng gobyerno. I started as a prosecutor. Kaya kapa ko yung kriminalo, pati yung mga criminals. That is why, Mr. President, I was asking uh, during my line of questioning a while ago addressed to uh, former Senator De Lima, why did she not file cases when she was the head of the Commission on Human Rights? She investigated, allegedly, the DDS, if there is a right term for it. She did not, she did not file any cases. You were present, Mr. President, when I think when... Uh, when uh, Senator De Lima, or uh, when she was the chair then of uh, the CHR, you were present during the investigation, if I am not mistaken, Mr. President. And, yes, sir. And the, the, the President, when I asked him, uh, uh, denied that there was an existence of uh, the Davao uh, Death Squad. My, my question lang, uh, Senator De Lima, why, bakit hindi kayo nag-file ng mga kaso kung talagang naniniwala po kayo na meron ho talagang Death Squad? Why did you not file cases immediately Nasag when he was just still a mayor? Yes, Your Honor. Nasagot ko na po yun. Hindi mo Dahil yung mga, eh. yung mga pwede talagang mga maging witnesses ay hindi pa willing, takot pa na mag-testify against the, the former mayor. All right. When you were Secretary of Justice, you had all the power. You were a very, very powerful cabinet member, member under the Aquino administration. Why did you not pursue it? Because at that time, Wala na nga akong nagiging resulta ng mga nagiging investigation din. Because again, you, Madam may, may, Chair, may hirap Madam kunin. Chair, uh, uh, Madam Senator, you were a very, very powerful member of the cabinet during the admin Aquino administration. You had all the resources. You had the NBI at your disposal. Lahat ng mga uh, government agencies were under your disposal. You had the ear of the president. Bakit hindi mo, bakit hindi kayo nag-file ng, ng kaso laban kay Mayor Duterte? At that time, the relevant, real evidence, testimonial evidence, wala pa po sa aking disposal. Although I did try, yung sinabi ko po kanina, na refer ko na muna sa NBI. So, uh, kaya lang, yun ang naging report, binalik nila sa akin. Now, they're trying, pero nahihirapan din sila na i-access yung mga witnesses. Mr. President, Kayo, uh, Mr. Yung Chair? sinasabi po kanina ni uh, former President Duterte na Davao is the safest city, I think that is belied by statistics. I don't have the exact statistics now, but I read certain data. It's not the safest city. It has the so what among is the, safest the highest. City, as far as you know, I would not know. It was among. It registered uh, as among those uh, with highest data on killings or murders. So how can it be a safe city, Mr. Just one last statement, uh, uh, last, last, Mr. Last, uh, Your uh, Honor. I cannot help myself. No, no excuse me, comment. Senator Estrada has the floor. Uh, Merong intervention gusto rito. If, yeah, if you will permit sige, it. Sige, sige. Okay, okay. Okay, Senator Bato, go ahead. Go ahead. 
Yeah, just, I, I just would like to put on record na uh, the statement of uh, our resource person, si Attorney Laila Dilima, na Dabao, dinidisclaim niya palagi na Dabao is not the safest place uh, in the Philippines. So what does that make of all these uh, awards that was received by Dabao City? Not only the LG of Dabao City, the Dabao City Police Office, ay palaging best city police office of the year. Halos forever na eh. Kaya there came a point na yung Dabao City Police Office ay hindi na sinasali sa best-best competition as far as unit performance is concerned. Dahil yung ibang mga syudad, hindi na makakatanggap ng award. Dahil Dabao City palagi na nanalo, based on record yan, sa Camp Crame. Ngayon, it is ako mismo, I'm, I'm from Dabao. I can tell you, Davao City is the safest place anywhere I go in the Philippines. The safest place for law-abiding citizens and the most dangerous place for the criminals. Talagang pag gumawa ka ng krimen ng Davao, ako, police ako ng Davao, hahabulin talaga kita. Hahanapin talaga kita, Mr. Pres uh, Mr. Chairman. Pag ikaw gumawa ng krimen sa aking syudad, hahabulin talaga kita. Kaya po, Mr. Chair, Ay, para, para pagbigyan sila. Sige, oh, sila sige. na naman. Sige, sige, sige pa. Okay. okay lang. Okay, okay lang. Sige. Okay lang. Just okay last lang. statement uh, before oh, I wrap up. Uh, before I give the uh, floor to Senator Risa. I just would like to put on record the uh, statements made by uh, Sen uh, former Senator Dilima. During the investigation here in the Senate, during her term when she was still a senator, uh, wala pa rin nakita kabidensya tungkol dyan sa mga DDS na tinatawag. Nung uh, CHR chairman siya, wala pa rin siyang, uh, wala rin nangyari sa mga investigation at wala pa rin nakita ng ebidensya. Nung secretary siya ng DOJ, which is a very, very, which is, which uh, is a very, very powerful uh, cabinet position, wala po rin siyang mga nakitang ebidensya. At hanggang ngayon, yun pa rin po ang sinasabi niya, wala pa rin gustong mag-testify, wala pa rin gustong, uh, wala pa rin siyang uh, kinakasuhan. So I think uh, that is a matter of incompetence, Mr. President, Mr. Chair. I take thank you, Mr. Chair. Can I, can, to that, can, uh, Your Honor. Okay.